It's a new week, which means we have new market trends in the comic community. Three up, three down starts right now. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics and this is the weekly three up, three down video where we are talking about three hot comic book market trends as well as three cold market trends. But just because they're cold, that doesn't mean that they're not great buying opportunities and we'll be hot again at some point. But either way, we're getting into it right now, starting with the three up portion. And the first one this week is Batwoman Beyond. The issue just came out, the latest Batman Beyond issue came out today. And we get a reveal of that identity, don't we, Jack? Yeah, we do, Brian. And just as been speculated for kind of several months now, it is Elena Grayson, uh, Dick Grayson's daughter, who first appears in Batman Beyond number 25, where you have that foil cover B, that really tough 9-8. Um, and this has been long talked about, right? This has been a hot book. This has been on everybody's hot lists. Um, but we get that confirmation in this issue, uh, Batman, Batman Beyond 40. Um, and it kind of gives credence to the speculation. But here's the interesting thing, Brian. Because it's in the news, all of this stuff is hot. But I, and I hate to be the guy who throws the wet blanket on the fire all the time. But I kind of got to here, right? Because I don't always, I've never understood the heat on this character from the beginning, right? I've, I've said I, it's a cool character. I think they've done a great job storytelling wise. And this character should be hot. But I, I still have questions like, why does Batwoman Beyond go for more than Batwoman? Um, the actual Batwoman. Uh, shouldn't Batwoman be a more valuable character? But it's a supply and demand thing, so it doesn't go that way. But my other question is, isn't this like a Cletus Cassidy carnage thing or, you know, a Eddie Brock Venom thing? Has it history proven that in the long run, the character that the person becomes is more important than their actual first appearance as a individual and if that's baby yes so if that's the case won't the value in the long run of batman beyond 25 not really sustain um but regardless of all of that talk it's red hot right now people are buying it it's been selling solidly for 25 dollars we're starting to see the uptick towards 30 35 um i'm starting to see some ridiculous listings go up for uh a and b uh and even more so, the first appearance of uh, Batwoman Beyond has also begun to heat up again um, with this talk. And I think it's only going to continue. Uh, this seems to be a character that has cap kind of captured the comic buyer at the moment. It's, it's kind of that hot modern character. So it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Yeah, anytime you get a headline about a reveal or something like, hey, the reveal is going to happen and it's kind of retconned. I won't say retconned, but ties back into the earlier issues. Like you said, it's the hot headline at the time. So I'm sure there was some demand for it today at the comic book store with that new issue with the reveal that's going on, as well as now that back issue, like you said, is going to be listed. But I'm pretty sure also we'll be talking about it in the near future on the cold list because I'm like you. I don't see this having super staying power. But either way, if you're reading Batman Beyond, the story's been great. I continue to read it. Yeah. I enjoy picking it up. This next one we're talking about on the hot portion this week. We've talked about it a lot lately. We talked about it on the bolo. We've talked about it on three up, three down, but we're going to continue to talk about it because it still continues to be hot. And we're talking Star Wars. Right. We've talked about Star Wars comics a lot. It's funny. Um, typically, Brian, we'd be talking about Star Wars on the cold portion of this list. You and I have often talked about how we've never really understood with such a large fan base why the comics haven't done more on the secondary market but right now at least within that investment community there seems to be a lot of people putting their money into various first appearances and i'm going to tell you what i think had a lot to do with it the movies are great the mandalorian has changed things because it, it was such a cultural phenomenon that restored a lot of fans faith yeah it was such a cultural phenomenon it brought in new fans um you have you you have people um like, you know, like I know like my kid's mom, she's one of those women that's like hooked on Baby Yoda, right? Uh, you know, and that happens. And then because of that, now she's willing to watch any Star Wars that there is. Um, and I think that's happened a lot. So there's been an increased fan base. And that has those investors seeing dollar signs, right? They're, they're all looking for what's that next book? So whether we're talking about some of these Rebels characters, whether we're talking about 
Dr. Afra, all of the rumors about what's going to be next with this Disney Plus um, kind of Star Wars universe that they're going to build. We're seeing people put their money into a lot of these back issues. And it's interesting that one of the areas that have been so kind of healthy as a back issue market over the last week has actually been Dark Horse Comics back issues, which traditionally have been some of the coldest back issues for Star Wars that there is once they made the move to Marvel. But whether Yeah, because weren't they considered non-canon at that point? Or- yeah, but collectors don't care, just like they don't care about Jane Foster. What if, you know, they, they want the first time it appears, period, except when it's like Hulk 181. But Especially that Clone Wars number one issue right now. Right, Clone Wars number one, that heir to the Empire, that first Thrawn. Um, you've got uh, the uh, the children of Han Solo. People kind of like speculating on who, who could Kylo Ren be based on and those issues. Um, there's just so many different ones. And a little plug, if you're looking to kind of like take a deep dive into some of these Dark Horse first appearances, head on over to our friends. We're not a member of the group anymore, but we still got to shout them out when they're doing good work. Ben C., the owner of comicbookinvest.com, actually put a first appearance chart or list up on the site that is just very, very, very um, in-depth, has a lot of characters, a lot of first appearances you may not be aware of. If you're hitting those back issue bins, it's really an essential tool. And it's a living list. So if you go on that list and you're like, well, I like this book and I don't see this book on this list, um, you know, shoot him a note in the comments, let him know, and he will add that into the list. Uh, and it's something to kind of pay attention to. And, you know, I think that it's, it's a trend that we're going to see continue, Brian. I think Star Wars is on the uptick. Um, there's a whole new generation of fans. And uh, maybe what you and I have been talking about for a year now about these books becoming popular, maybe it's, it's the time. But whether it's the newer stuff with Kylo Ren, whether it's the old stuff with these first appearances, it's all hot right now. Yo, yo, <laughs> definitely. We'll see how long it stays, but yeah. I'm enjoying the ride. It's even made me go back and pick up some more Star Wars books. I've also been picking up some of them up, up in trade just because I want to catch up on some of those stories. But either way, Star Wars is still hot. Then the last one we want to talk about on the three up portion this week is Wonder Twins. And why is this hot right now, Jack? Well, Brian, I don't really know. I have some speculation on why it may be hot. Um, It's kind of funny. uh, But, you know, if you've watched the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover series, the five-episode crossover on the CW, um, I'm going to spoil it a little bit. But I got to say, if you haven't watched it, check it out. I mean, as a fan, I'm going to tell you this. Now, yes, I'm a CW fan. It is the best bit of comic book television I might have ever seen as cool as the Mandalorian is as cool as those Netflix Marvel shows. Um, as far as making you geek out as a fan, they hit every string they could hit. Um, whether it was Kevin Conroy, whether it was 89 Batman, um, whether it was the end where you see the hall of justice and they form the justice league and they get the justice league table. And you hear a kind of a sound of a monkey in the rafters at which point you see busting out of the case. Gleek. Uh, Gleek, if you're not familiar with who is Gleek, Gleek is the monkey from the Super Friends cartoon. Yeah, the 80s, baby. Right. And if you're not familiar with the Super Friends cartoon, it was essentially a Justice League cartoon with a whole lot of comedy and some unique new characters. Gleek. That was my introduction to the Justice League. Many of us as kids, it was. Um, And Gleek was a funny character on the show, very popular amongst kids, um, but one that isn't well known today. Now, his first appearance in issue six is also popular. Um, but issue seven is doing really well. And that's the first appearance of the Wonder Twins. And I don't think you're going to see another YouTube channel or another comic publication talk about the Wonder Twins right now. But it's kind of like a stealth first appearance on the rise. These books were selling for $10 to $15. They're now selling for about $40. Um, Super Friends in general is popular. Super Friends number one is selling for $70 plus. Uh, So, you know, those are books that, yeah, we're talking 1970s. So it's not like, the easiest finds in the world, but a lot of dealers disrespect those books. They just don't see them as real viable back issues. And because they're on the march and because they're on the rise, now is the time to liberate those bins. I promise you, you can get Wonder Twins first appearance on the back issue market at live shows or at your LCS far cheaper than $40. Um, And 
uh, right now it, it seems to be a good buy. Now, what's interesting is we haven't seen any of the modern um, under the Brian Michael Bendis wonder kind of imprint. We haven't seen those new Wonder Twins books take off. It just seems to be going to. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think unless they show up on the show, right? If they show up on the show and they're entertaining, then possibly. I think if Gleek, I think what people are making the leap, they're believing if Gleek is there, if Gleek is going to be part of this incarnation of the Justice League, then the Wonder Twins have to be not far away. Um, And that's probably a solid educated guess. Although CW speculation typically hadn't done very well, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths did did very well for people. People were able to sell a lot of Crisis on Infinite Earths books during that crossover. So, Speaking of Crisis on Infinite Earths, if you are looking for some back issues dealing with Crisis on Infinite Earths, we have a back issue bolo video on this channel that you can check out. Very affordable books. Something can be found out in those dollar bins. But we'll put a card up here right now for you to see, as well as a link to it in the description if you guys want to check that out. And that's going to be the three up portion, but we're not done. Now we're getting into what is the cold market trends right now. Starting with that three down portion, we get the Hasbro verse. This was talked about a lot a few years ago. We're talking about masks. We're talking about Transformers, talking about GI Joe, talking about how they're going to create like their own MCUs, the benchmark. So all these publishers or all these companies, um, was it all spark productions talking about creating their universe as well. It was hot. But as of right now, it's kind of on that downward trend. Yeah, and this is why I wanted to highlight this, Brian, this week. Um, many people know you're wearing a Cobra shirt. Everyone knows my love for G.I. Joe, Transformers. Um, this is my belief as a be- one of the best investments of the next three years. Um, one of the best investments you can make. Because it's not just All Spark Productions as an independent movie company, but it's also Paramount Pictures who have a stake in All Spark. We're going to distribute and release. Paramount's a major movie company. Every movie company wants their superhero universe. They're watching this money that Disney is literally printing. They're watching what Warner Brothers was able to do with the Joker. They want that kind of money. And they want these kinds of movies that attract all ages where they can do licensing and merchandising and you know all the toys that go with it and all of that. And in order to do that, you got to have the superhero universe. And it's Paramount has this deal lined up with the Hasbro verse. Now, well, another reason why I think this is a very viable thing to talk about right now as buying opportunity is, it, is it's been hot in the past. So when ROM got announced that it was in some stage of development, we saw ROM number one go through the roof. Now it's dropped back down like 60 to 70%, Brian, decrease in value. We saw Micronauts number one shoot through the roof. Another one, 60 to 70% decrease in value. In, in value. When I say value, I mean eBay's secondary market sold pricings. Um, there was a lot of heat surrounding Snake Eyes around the announcement of the G.I. Joe movie in production being a Snake Eyes origin story. A lot of that has slowed down. Um, we've talked on this channel about how Transformers books don't seem to be moving the needle, whether it's IDW incentives or even some of those kind of classic Marvel ones. Um, really haven't been moving but every time there's an announcement we see a spike so there's the potential there and i think that this is the kind of the spec cycle the kind of typical option announcement cycle where we know all of these movies are coming right we know that paramount a large company is behind it um but people bought into it and then moved on i think people jumped out too quick brad i think there's some great brand opportunities for Tons of books from Transformers 1 to ROM 1 to Micronauts 1 to Mask 1 to those mask previews to dozens of G.I. Joe back issues um, to a lot of the current variants. There's so many buying opportunities for these books. And then before we move on, if you watch uh, our friends TiVo and the Lords of the Long Box and their YouTube channel, shout out to them, they were breaking news in the last week that there is supposed to be a Power Rangers scene at the end of the next Bumblebee movie. And if that happens and the Power Rangers enter into the Hasbro verse, that's even more going to make me feel like this is a solid, solid, solid long-term investment for all of these properties. Because I just think that the fan bases for these are so massive. 
they just need to be done right in film to make those comics pop. Yeah, I'm kind of glad they're on the cold and on the downward trend, not just so much from an investment because that's a bonus, but to me, it's like buying up my Saturday mornings right there, buying yeah. up those cheap and makes it more affordable. So just being able to buy that nostalgia at a low price, definitely loving that right now. And the possibility that they'll gain in value. Icing on the cake, right? Top. Yeah. Then the next part of our three down portion, we are talking about Red Sonia, but not any Red Sonia. We're talking about that Dynamite series that's come and gone. It's been rebooted. It's been renumbered. But it's down. But this is another one that's great because it's down. We're Jack and I were talking about this before the show. There's a lot of great covers out there that are very affordable, aren't there, Jack? Yeah, and it's down in demand, not necessarily in value. There's still some good high prices paid for some of these back issues. Um, the key is the fact that there isn't a huge buyer pool looking for these books. Now, the thing about it is, I mentioned to you before we shot this, that I actually had looked at Red Sonja for the up portion because Conan 23 and 24, another one of those issues where you can't argue with me that Conan 23 isn't the first appearance of Red Sonja, but for whatever reason, the market likes 24, she's on the cover. Um, those books have been hot for some time as, you know, whether it was the announcement of the Red Sonja movie, which has since been canceled, and most of us expectation that eventually a movie will come, whether it's been uh, her popularity in the comics, the rebooted series, those first appearances have been doing well. But there are some classic back issues, whether it's Red Sonja or Queen Sonja, that Dynamite put out with some artists. Art, a lot of artists were kind of cutting their teeth doing a lot of these Dynamite covers before getting, say, like, mainstream popular and we're talking about people like uh lucio perillo and jenny frizen uh who are two people who did red sonia back issues where if you dig in those back issue bins you go to these these lcs's that've got those you know those dusty old comic bins they've got those books back there like brian was saying some of them are cover a's some of them are cover b's and c's and are even tougher to find but you find them um these are books that i regularly find and i will buy any dynamite um even beyond Red Sonia, Vampirella or Deja Torres, um, any of those Perio or Frizen books that I can find. Uh, and my big suggestion to people, and like I was telling Brian beforehand, is you buy those. And if you're buying them for your collection, that's one thing. If you're buying them to sell them, you just have to be patient because they, like I said, with the demand being what it is, they sell slower, but they sell well. There are certain books where you just never see them on the market. And especially when you start getting into those like incentive virgin covers, you can start to get to like unreal pricing because it's like what I talk about with GI Joe or Power Rangers or properties like that, where the fan base may be smaller, but they're rabid and these books don't come up very often. Yeah. So like the Joe Jusco one that they just had was a one seventy five. Yep, freaking love that cover. And there's some more classics like I mentioned the the current popular artists Perio and Frizen, but there's also some classic artists like Jusco. Alex Ross has done some great covers. Ale Garza um, is another one comes from like that school of uh, Michael Turner, J. Scott Campbell, uh, Paul Green kind of look um, is another one to be on the lookout for. And there's for. even up and coming artists like Peach Momoko. Right. All right. And speaking of which, Frankie's Comics has that brand new Red Sonia Age of Chaos number one. Um, that Peach Momoku variant, very well timed as Peach Momoku's star is absolutely on the rise to drop that variant right now. And that's available on frankiescomics.com right now. Then for the last portion of the three down, we have those number one issues for comic books. Why are these even down, Jack? Well, you know what's funny? Um, there's certainly a popularity with number one issues when they get released. Um, but they are no longer, Brian, being viewed as like a solid investment for secondary market purposes. If you really go back and look, in the last, like, say, three years, what number one is worth solid money right um, especially like deadpool number one volume yeah. 12 even in even books like popular books like venom and donny case run venom number one is still a good book right it's still an eight to ten dollar book above cover price but it's not number three it's not number seven it's not number nine people are become so key driven so first appearance driven nobody's building runs anymore and that's where the value of number one used to come from right when people were building those runs those number ones would sell out. That would be the most expensive book to go get for your run. Um, and you're not seeing that anymore. 
And they're uh, also usually the most available now because the number one issue usually has the higher print run. Exactly. There's so many different factors to go into. There's the higher print run. There's the store exclusives um, and how that plays into it. Did those print runs. There's the fact that most number ones, this type of storytelling that we're getting in comics today, we're not getting first appearances in number ones. Most number ones are setup issues. Um, they're really kind of setting the stage for the story, which is why some of these keys happen issues two, three, four, five. Um, and also, you mentioned the series is getting rebooted earlier in the show. When we were talking about Van Perel. That's the thing, or uh, Red Sonia. That's the thing is, it's hard to get excited about a number one. The la when was the last run of number ones that had anybody's attention on the secondary market? Very easy. New 52. Um, New 52 was, and you have to say, well, why? Well, Batman hadn't had a number one in 40 years, uh, 50 years. You know, uh, you hadn't had one in Superman since 87. You hadn't had one in Wonder Woman since 87. So for these reasons, people were on board with these new number ones. The problem is now we've got Rebirth. And if you look at the sales of the Rebirth titles, none of the Rebirth number ones are in any sort of demand. I mean, frequently you find Rebirth number ones in dollar bins. And I think as DC inevitably reboots, as Marvel inevitably continues to reboot, I think this is a trend we're gonna see continue. I think that the luster in the number one issue has been lost as we've rebooted the series and have constant number ones. If you were to sit and, and say like, I'm gonna get every Captain America number one, whether it's a mini series or it's a Captain America volume, whatever, you could fill a short box with Captain America number ones. And I just think at some point, there's just too many, they, they're not, nothing special about them anymore. And there's no reason for anyone to invest. And the market has just changed. The market has changed from a, a series driven collectorship to a key issue driven collectorship. And that's why first appearances have far overtaken these number one issues. That's the end of the cold portion. That's also the full three up, three down for this week. Let us know in the comments, what do you guys think of these picks? Do you have any of these hot picks? Do you have any of these cold picks? Do you see any of these cold picks as being buying opportunities? That's how Jack and I like to look at a lot of these. But either way, let us know. And click that thumbs up button for us. This is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. One.